Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> this was the first line of email I sent to my colleagues to inform them that in our clinic in Everett, Washington, we had identified the first case of domestic COVID-19 in the United States. The Everett Clinic is a large multi-specialty clinic located in the Puget Sound Basin. It has 30 clinics scattered across Puget Sound and sees more than a third of a million patients a year. Everett was also the first city where the first patient had been hospitalized with COVID-19 a month earlier after that person had returned from China. Having identified the first person who had not traveled outside the United States with COVID-19, I knew that COVID was spreading undetected in our community. And I knew we were in big trouble. We, like so many other clinics across the United States and the world, were operating in the dark. At this early stage in the pandemic, the only way to be tested for COVID was through the public health laboratory, and the laboratory capacity to test was fairly limited. So they were only taking specimens from individuals who had traveled and returned to the United States from China and were symptomatic enough or sick enough to be in the hospital or the emergency room. It was well over two weeks before the first commercial laboratories began offering COVID-19 in the United States. But the capacity of these laboratories to test was minuscule compared to the demand. This resulted in swabs being sent in and results taking more than a week to come back. During the first weeks of the pandemic, there were less than 10,000 COVID tests being run in the entire United States on a daily basis. It was well over nine months into the pandemic before the testing capacity caught up with the demand, at which time there were two million tests being performed on a daily basis. So what was the result of this? COVID was spreading undetected, and as clinicians, we just had no idea who was sick, who was infected, and who was not. And of course, we all know the impact of this uncertainty that it had on our society. Lockdowns, social distancing, the isolation, the impact on our economy and our kids, our mental health, and unfortunately, the 1.2 million people we have lost to COVID in the United States alone in the past three years. We're still feeling the impact of the pandemic today, and COVID is still with us, but we're much better able to manage the response to COVID in a completely different way than we were three years ago. And I'm really proud to say that my colleagues and I have had a part to play in that. Let me take you back to the day after I sent that email, which was a Friday afternoon. Houston, we have a problem. It was Saturday morning we opened up a command center at the Everett Clinic in response to the clinic and tried to orchestrate what we were going to do. One of the first priorities we identified very early on was that we had to figure a way out to be able to test people in a massive manner, in a massive scale. From the onset, it was very clear to me that testing would be key to managing the pandemic. You see, testing at the beginning of the pandemic had to be carried out by a process called a nasal pharyngeal swab. This swab was a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> I hope you haven't had to do this more than once. Let's turn that off and not play it again. I knew that would be a problem. But anyways, nasal pharyngeal swabs was the only way that was approved to test people and it required trained healthcare providers. And we wrapped them up in all this PPE to keep them from getting infected. And quite frankly, they were terrified. 
right? You're literally in the face of somebody who's coughing, and you have to put this really uncomfortable nasal pharyngeal swab down through their nose to the back of their throat, and they don't like it, right? <laughs> and I don't know how many of you guys had one of these things, but you probably don't want to have a second one. We also didn't have enough nasal pharyngeal swabs. So the first priority was really to figure out how to taste, test patients safely and really at scale. So I led several important studies um, which lowered the barriers to testing. All these studies were open access without patent and I've shared these widely with the public health community and science. In the first study, my, my colleagues and I in the walk-in clinic at the Everett Clinic, we were able to pull the study off in the second week of the pandemic, demonstrated that nasal swabs, the kind you're doing now, collected by the patient themselves, were just as effective as diagnosing COVID as using these long nasal pharyngeal swabs collected by healthcare workers. This greatly decreased the infection risk to our healthcare workers, our nurses, and our MAs, and decreased the amount of PPE required, which we didn't have enough of at the beginning of the pandemic, and was much more comfortable for our patients. In a second study, we demonstrated that foam and polyester swabs were equivalent to the specialized swabs we were using, and this provided an inexpensive material, an alternative material to make additional swabs, because remember, we didn't have enough swabs at the beginning of the pandemic. In a third study, we demonstrated that polyester swabs placed in a dry tube without transport media could also be used for testing. These seemingly small incremental discoveries from the ability of patients to self-collect a nasal swab to the use of inexpensive polyester materials to manufacture swabs to transporting swabs without liquid transport media really revolutionized the COVID testing process. And ultimately, this resulted in patients self-collected home antigen tests. By now, I'm sure that everyone in the audience has used one of these home COVID tests. These first became available in November of 2020, and in the first three months, 350 million of these tests were distributed to households free of charge by the government in more than half the households in the United States. Antigen tests, if you have heard, are not quite as sensitive as laboratory-based polymerase chain reaction tests, but these tests have huge advantages. Number one, they're simple. Number two, they're inexpensive to make. And three, they've been used by millions of people in the comfort of their own home. So the result of all this is, as far as what we know today, we know way more than at any early stage in the pandemic. Who's sick, who's infected, and who is not. Because testing enables the sick to isolate quickly and to seek treatment. Those who've been exposed to test themselves and really to help protect the vulnerable populations, while all at the same time keeping society open and functioning normally. Good news, right? Well, yeah. But the story really doesn't end here, right? Because COVID is not the first pandemic we have ever faced, nor will it be the last. When the next pandemic comes, and unfortunately it will come, the first line of defense, as far as testing goes, will be the polymerase chain reaction test. The PCR test can be rapidly developed and they're a lot more accurate and sensitive than these home tests. But during the COVID pandemic, as you saw, labs couldn't produce these COVID PCR tests fast enough to reach the level of testing that we needed in order to figure the situation out. So the real question is, how can we quickly deliver and process PCR tests at scale? And I've really spent a lot of my time in the past three years working on this problem. And what I want to share with you today is the vision of how we can do this right, okay? One which starts with an easy way to make an appointment for a test. 
no matter which healthcare organization you belong to, whether you have insurance or whether you don't, we will need to be using our phones, okay? When you have your phone, you can enter your information in, we can answer simple questions about your symptoms, and then when you arrive at the testing center, you'll be given a tube to take your sample in. The tube will have a printed barcode on it. You'll use your phone to scan in the sample to pair your tube sample with your record. When you remove the swab from the tube, you'll notice that there's no liquid because liquid spills and contaminates things. And then you'll swab the front of your nose. No more brain tickling, guys. Okay? <laughs> we'll put the tubes in a rack and then we'll send this rack of tubes or samples to the lab. And this is where the real revolution in speed and scale can occur. What I want to show you next is miniaturized PCR test. Each one of these bubbles represents a single PCR. And the volume of this is one-tenth of the current volume it takes to run a PCR. There are dozens of PCRs on this ribbon. And this ribbon is rolled up onto a reel. This allows us to process thousands or tens of thousands of PCRs all simultaneously at the same time. So with this miniaturization, we're able to run many more PCR tests at the same time. And decreasing the volume saves reagents. And the other thing that we've done in the background is to reduce the time it takes to run a PCR from three hours down to 70 minutes. If we look at the typical lab in the COVID pandemic, they could process approximately 1,000 PCRs a day. Using this new methodology, we've demonstrated that you can actually process 100,000 PCRs every 24 hours. So if you think about this, at 2 million tests a day, we can get that done with 20 labs. Okay? And that's really remarkable. It's really Star Wars. This all means that with the next pandemic kits, testing can be and will be cheaper, faster, and easier at a scale that is completely unrecognizable from the early days of the pandemic. Testing will remain one of the keys to minimizing the impact of the next pandemic. Knowing who is infected will help keep each one of us safe and our loved ones safe. Minimizing the impact on our society and keeping the economy, schools, and society open. COVID will not be the last pandemic we will need to face. But with faster, better testing at scale, the next pandemic not, does not need to be as disruptive as the last. We will need to test patients. We can and we will do better. Thank you. <laughs>